Two things converged recently that spurred me to release this video. First, the great VRAM debate of 2023 appears to have landed on the side of 8 gigabytes of VRAM is not enough. With a majority of PCs now running Steam, uh, as of the latest hardware survey, reporting a GeForce RTX 3060 12 gigabyte as their primary GPU. Second, uh, the 1080 Ti, at least the blower variants, have reached a new low price on eBay in the US of just $200. This makes them pretty tempting alternatives to the 6600 and 6650 and the ARC A750 that cost around $250 new but only have 8 gigs of VRAM. But it's also tempting when you consider that the cheapest 12 gigabyte GPUs out there are the 6700 XT and 3060 12 gig, both of which come in starting at around $350. So there's the potential to save 150 bucks there, and that's not nothing. Now, the 1080 Ti was the premier consumer variant of uh, NVIDIA's Pascal graphics architecture, which released in 2016 and 2017. The GP102 die includes 3584 shaders, 224 texture mapping units, and 88 render outputs, and addresses 11 gigabytes of GDDR5X VRAM, capable of 484 gigabytes per second of bandwidth, which is not bad, even by today's standards. Of course, I'm sure you're all aware of the risks of buying a used graphics card. Always make sure you can afford a replacement, or you buy from a reseller that allows no-nonsense returns for defective products. But that being said, Pascal has aged phenomenally well, and I'm sure this is much to the chagrin of Jensen. I'm honestly surprised that NVIDIA hasn't dumped driver support for the architecture yet, pushing people onto the new 30 and 40 series cards, but I'm sure that's coming. For now, though, could this bargain behemoth be the cure we need for the great VRAM debacle of 2023? Let's find out. <laughs> I'm benchmarking in my PCI Express test bench that I showed off in my Fermi video a couple of weeks back. This is a Ryzen 9 5950X on an A320 board, pl please don't laugh, with 16 gigs of DDR4-3000 and a couple of SATA SSDs for boot and game loading. Remember, this was a system that's destined for doing cheap AM4 Ryzen builds. It just happens to also run games really well with a 5950X in it. To get my bearings, I started with Shadow of the Tomb Raider's built-in benchmark. This should allow you to compare this card that I'm testing here broadly across other testers by adjusting my scores with theirs. So I use the 1080p high settings with no render scaling, so native resolution, and no RT effects. Uh, the Tomb Raider benchmark turned in an average of 143 FPS while using less than 6 gigabytes of VRAM. So we're looking good to get things started. I also ran the card through a few 3D marks, including 3D Mark 11 for old style DX11 games, as well as Fire Strike, Time Spy, and even Port Foil. Yes, even though the 1080 Ti has no ray accelerators, it will run Port Royal. Um, the results for the synthetic benchmarks are on screen now. Okay, getting into the game testing, I started with The Last of Our VRAM Part 1 and chose 1080p high settings, which the game predicted would use a little over 7 gigabytes of VRAM to run. 1080p Ultra predicted 11.5 gigabytes of VRAM usage, and I was already seeing under 60 FPS just at the main menu, so I decided not to push it up to Ultra. That said, even with these settings, the game ran quite well and looked excellent, with no real issues. Last of Us at 1080p uh, High averaged just under 60 FPS. The Resident Evil 4 Remake, at least the demo, ran fine as well, uh, although the demo version I realized only allows up to the 2GB texture preset, uh, which I'm pretty sure is not going to run over anybody's VRAM limits. Uh, <laughs> since I refuse to buy yet another game I won't play just to benchmark it, um, we're stuck with the demo's results here, but the demo's 2GB preset at 1080p only used about 5.5 gigs of VRAM. Also ran quite nicely. Thank you. 
As for games I actually play, Deep Rock Galactic ran phenomenally, as you might expect, at 1080p ultra settings, using only a hair over 2GB of VRAM to do so. <laughs> That's more like it. For funsies, I ran the Quake 2 RTX demo on the 1080 Ti. Um, just like Port Royal, it will actually run on this thing. Uh, at 1080p native resolution, of course, it is pretty slow, turning in a cinematic 18 to 24 FPS. Um, but with a 50% resolution scale applied, that jumped up to a buttery smooth average of 71 FPS. Fortnite was up next, and I jumped into a quick bot match just to see how the old Pascal powerhouse handles Unreal Engine 5. Turns out, just fine. At DX12, 1080p low settings, epic view distance, 100% res scale, also known as the competitive settings, the 1080 Ti turned in an average of 299 FPS. Turning the detail up to epic with a 70% resolution scale and software lumen, uh, the game looked phenomenal and remained above 60 FPS average. Next up is Stray at 1080p high settings, uh, which turned in a, a beautiful 150 FPS average. Completely unnecessary for a single player game like this, but wow, look at those numbers. <laughs> it also looked really great doing so and used well under 4 gigs of VRAM doing so. Last but not least, Cyberpunk at 1080p Ultra looked great and cranked out over 60 FPS through the benchmark, as well as during a brief joyride through Night City. It also used less than 5.5 gigs of VRAM the whole time. Cyberpunk unfortunately refuses to turn on any of its ray tracing features with the 1080 Ti, despite Quake 2 RTX and Port Royal running on the card. I really, really, really wanted to do the RT Overdrive mode on this, just to see, like, if I got one or two FPS on it. But sadly, it just won't do it. Anyway, that's the testing results. Uh, I apologize for only testing at 1080p. Um, I kind of threw this video together at the last minute and this was the only resolution my capture card would behave with for whatever reason. I really need a better capture card. Anyway, does the 1080 Ti make sense in 2023? I mean, if you're still on Kepler or integrated graphics, it's a pretty effective frame rate generator. But I have to think that more modern architectures like ARC and RDNA will be better bets as we get more games targeting the 9th gen consoles. If you bought one of these new back in 2017 and you're still running it, good on ya. These things are starting to become classics as it looks like Nvidia is loath to reproduce the incredible gen-on-gen -gen performance uplift from this architecture ever again. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the benchmarks and the brief, brief, brief look back at the 1080 Ti in 2023. Um, and yeah, maybe it is the cure for the great VRAM debacle of 2023. I don't know. <laughs> I have a I have an upcoming video uh, looking at the Arc A750 with versus the 6650 XT, uh, and I'm going to throw the 1080 Ti in there since it's right around that price point, and we'll see how three of how how all three of them get along with each other. So. Um, Feel free to stick around for that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to, to catch it when it comes out. Anyway, I will see you all in the next video. Have a good one.